Welcome to the Mood Light tutorial. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to create this color changing mood light by writing code in the update and draw methods of our Game 1 class. Along the way, you'll be introduced to the color structure and its components, how C Sharp stores data and variables, and how we make decisions within a game context using conditionals. Let's start by opening up the Mood Light project from the previous lesson, in which we learned the basics of navigating Visual Studio, a little bit about C Sharp, and a little bit about the XNA framework. Over here, under Recent Projects, you can find Mood Light. So you can just click that right there if you want. Or if it's not there, go to File, Open Project. And here I have Mood Light on my desktop. Open it up and double click on the solution. There we go. In XNA, all the project resources are wrapped up in something called a solution. And what you have here is the XNA game1.cs code template. And you see that there are multiple methods and summaries that I've already shrank. And so here they are. I shrank them because I'm not going to be using them right now. The one method I'm going to be using right now is the draw method. Here's the draw method. In the draw method, you see a statement, graphicsdevice.clear color.peru. This is the statement that controls the background color. Now remember, in the draw method, we display pictures, text, and other image-related content. So this statement fits within the context of the draw method. Remember that we can change the color by deleting the Peru part and the dot part pressing dot and using IntelliSense to help us decide what other colors we'd like to see. Let's pick turquoise. That's always a nice color. Remember to run an XNA project, just press F5 or the start debugging play key right here. F5. Wow. That definitely is turquoise. Now to stop an XNA program, you can press stop right here, or you can just close the window. Let's just close the window. Color.turquoise is a value. Let's create a variable to represent the background color. Go to the draw method and right above graphicsdevice.clear, type in color. background color. In this case, color is the type and background color is the identifier for a variable. This variable is going to hold a color. So let's go ahead and assign it a color. Here we see IntelliSense doing its magic again and it's sensing that I want to type in background color. So now I don't actually have to finish the typing. I can just go ahead and press enter and background color shows up. Background color equals new color, and in this case, a color is composed of three different color components, RGB, red, green, blue. So let, let's uh, type in 0, comma, 0, comma, 0. And here you see IntelliSense showing again what I should type in, a float R, float G, and a float B float being a data type and R being the uh, representation for red, zero, zero, zero here. And instead of color dot turquoise, I'm going to replace it with, you guessed it, background color. So let me run this by pressing F5 and surprise, surprise, you're going to see black. Black is the color zero, 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 no red, no green, no blue. Pause the video and add this code. Let's experiment a little bit with the red, green, and blue values. Each color component can hold a number between 0 and 255, basically 256 different values. So let's type in 255, 255, and keep the blue component 0. So basically full red, full green, no blue. Let's see what this looks like. 
All right, yellow, cool. Let's try another one. What about 255, 255, 255? Guess what you'll see. It's white. So 000, zero, zero is black and 255, 255, 255 is white. To create a mood light, we're going to need three color variables to represent red, green, and blue. Go to the top of the game class and right under Sprite Batch, create a comment, color variables. And this is where we're going to create our color variables. They're going to be of the data type byte. And let's make one for red intensity and set it to zero. And go ahead and create the same types of variables, but for green intensity, set it to zero. And lastly, blue intensity. Pause the video and add this code. And now down below, instead of saying, uh, putting in actual values here, we're just going to put in red, green, and blue. Pause the video and add this code. And now if we press F5, we should see the same thing going on. Black. Wonderful. Not much of a mood light yet. We need to actually get the red, green, and blue intensities changing. So let's go to the update method and close the draw method, make it nice and neat. And in this to do common area, we're going to update the red intensity by one each update, each call to update. And same thing with green and blue. So what's going on here with update and draw is that update and draw are called 60 times a second. Update, draw, update, draw, update, draw, 60 times a second. And what update will do is it will update the red, green, and blue uh, variable values by one each time. So if it starts at zero, which it does, it will go zero, one, two, three, and that'll happen 60 times a second. And so each time update gets called, the variables get updated, and then the draw method takes care of actually showing the result of the increment. Let's see what happens. Press F5. Hmm, interesting. Well, first off, it's only black and white. And second off, I don't know if you caught it, but when it went from black to white, from white, it switched straight to black once again. So what we have going on here is data overflow. We know that the red, green, and blue components of a color can only go from 0 to 255. So what happens when it hits 256 and 257, it actually cycles over back to 0. And so we see an abrupt change in color. Well, so what are we going to do? Well, we're actually going to have to count from 0 to 255. And then once we hit 255, count back down to 255, 254, 253, and so on. So let's go ahead and write some code for that. We're going to have to use some booleans to help us decide when we should count up and count down. And those booleans are going to be uh, mixed with uh, some conditional statements. So first off, let's create the variables to represent uh, whether we're counting up or counting down. So in this case, we're going to need three new variables, and they're all going to be of type bool, rep representing boolean. And we're going to have red counting up. And when we start, red counting up should set, be set to true. And we're going to have the same thing going on for red, green, and blue. So I'm going to do a little programming trick here. It's called copy and paste. It's the second best thing compared to uh, IntelliSense. And I'm going to type in green. And I'm going to type in blue. Always be careful when you're copying and pasting, though. Pay attention to what you're doing. Pause the video and add this code. So red, green, blue, counting up. 
Let's go to the update method. I'm going to close my draw method here. And in the update method, I'm going to write some conditionals. And my first conditional will be if red intensity is equal to 255, red counting up will be equal to, you guessed it, false because I don't want to count up anymore. And if red intensity is equal to zero, you guessed it, red counting up is going to be set to true. I'm not finished though. I actually have to increment the red intensity um, when I'm supposed to. So if red counting up, red intensity plus plus, else red intensity minus minus. So let's press F5 and see what happens. Hmm. Okay. Obviously this isn't complete because I need to do the same thing with green and blue. So go ahead and do that and then we'll see a pretty cool mood light um, action going on. Pause the video and add this code. Alright, so we've changed the update code for the red, green, and blue intensities. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Okay, from black all the way to white, and oh nice, and it counts down, and then it counts back up. No abrupt change. Sweet. Kinda. There's still no color. So, the reason why this is, is because the values start at 0, 0, 0. And then they all go to 1, 1, 1, and then 2, 2, 2. And what happens is, whenever red, green, and blue are the exact same colors, we just get a shade of gray. So what we need to do is go to the beginning of the code. And instead of 0, 0, 0, let's just start them off with different values, like 0, 80, and 160. Press F5. Let's see what happens. Okay. I think we got something going on here. Orange to purple to blue again, to green to orange, to purple to blue, to green to orange. Wait a second. This mood light's not really changing its pattern. It's just the same pattern over and over again. I think there's more we need to do. And that's what's up to you. By now you should be ready to code the mood light or have already finished coding the mood light. The lab for this lesson will extend the skills you learned in coding the mood light to a different situation. In the lab for this lesson, your job is to make the pattern change every so often so that's not the same pattern but in addition you want to create a little strobe effect let's see what that strobe effect looks like Woo! oh yeah this is the techno mood light what you see going on here is that the pattern is changing it's not the same pattern, but also there's a little strobe effect going on. Now, don't look at this too long because it's probably bad for your eyes and, and all that. But um, this would be great for a little dance party. You know, I'm feeling a little dancey right now. Ooh, ooh. All right. Now, go ahead and make this.